Dear ladies and gentlemen, I hope everybody is doing well and feels comfortable. My name is Dalibor Huska, I am from Mendel University in Brno and from the Department uh, of Chemistry and Biochemistry. Now our team is carrying out on research on plants and microalgae and mainly their interaction with abiotic and biotic stress factors with special focus on secondary metabolites and secondary metabolism and also research of microalgae and their utilization in, uh, in the future agriculture. Current challenges for the agriculture sector are food security to feed and increasing uh, global population and we are talking about 2 billion people in the next 30 years. This this all ideally without expansion of agriculture land. While at the same time reducing the environmental damage, I mean mainly related to agrochemicals and in this way preserving natural resource like soil and water for future generation. This fact comes from OECD Global Forum on Agriculture 2019. So the main challenge is adapting whole agriculture sector to global climate change. For example, the yield of cereal, which is one of the most important crops worldwide must increase by almost a billion tons by 2050 from the current level to feed the increasing population. This is already pointed out in the FAO report in 2009. The first, second and third green revolution have already fulfilled the capacities of contemporary agriculture crop yield during the last 80 years and only Green Revolution 4.0 based on new, new technologies like CRISPR, 3D printing, nanotechnology, smart farming and microalgae biotechnologies can move the whole agri sector ahead again and increased crop yield. I would like to stop in some of the technologies what we are interested and also present some disadvantages because I think that these advantages are necessary to move science ahead. So now about a little bit about CRISPR-Cas9 editing. Uh, main disadvantages is still a very rigid cell wall in plants which makes it difficult to deliver the whole CRISPR system into the cell. And also the fact that plants edited by CRISPR are listed as GMOs, although CRISPR unlike GMOs works with native characteristics in, this, in the crop and does not introduce new genes. We can imagine CRISPR as a pair of scissors and a needle with a thread. This system can sew, sew a hole on a t-shirt and thus repair it without losing its quality. But this system can also create a completely new hole and then make a patch of a different color, for example. In addition, Everything can only be done with genes that organism has at its disposal. The second is smart farming. Like drones and autonomous robots for soil and field analysis, planting, crop spraying and monitoring, irrigation and health assessment. However, there are disadvantages, include still low flight time and live battery, little area coverage, difficult to control them in extreme weather conditions, and lack of current 
agrochemicals for spraying in these technologies. The third is 3D biopriting, like hydrocolloids, which are substances that form gels with water. Main disadvantage include lack of multi-cell priting and damage of cell during photocuring. The fourth is vertical and urban farming. We are talking mainly about hydroponic, hydroponic in-house farming. These advantages include contamination of urban soils, making them unsuitable for food production and adequate yield, time-consuming crops management, and it is still an, an energetically and financially expensive process. In the following presentation, I would like to mention and highlight the fifth technology, microalgae and cyanobacteria, which could also be called green factories for everything. I would like to stop at this topic for a while because biotechnology of microalgae interconnects all the above mentioned technologies and can really be the main element of the green revolution 4.0. Oh. Cyanobacteria and microalgae are mainly aquatic photosynthetic microorganisms that appeared on Earth about 3 billion year, years ago and are considered the first life form and main producer of oxygen on our planet. Microalgae or unicellular algae belong to organism which with a great resource of genetic and metabolomic diversity and owing to the recent, re recent developments in genetic engineering, this group of microorganisms is one of the most promising source for biotechnological production of compounds for medical, pharmaceutical and uh, energy and bioplastic and especially food industry. Because microalgae are source of valuable proteins, lipids, carbohydrates and wide range of pigments, vitamins and antioxidants and many of other, in many cases, still unknown compounds, especially from group of secondary metabolites. So the great potential of microalgae to produce such compounds is due to advantages, features such as rapid growth, because microalgae do not contain roots, stems, leaves or flowers. They grow much faster than terrestrial plants and from this point of view are characterized as the most productive cell known in the world. Their photosynthetic activity, whose efficiency in converting solar energy to chemicals energy is up to 10 times higher than that of terrestrial plants. So theoretically, approximately 10% of average sunlight Irradiance is converted into the 77 grams biomass per meter square per day, representing a microalgae biomass yield uh, of 280 tons per hectare per year. Another advantage of microalgae is to big catalog of secondary metabolites. It assumed that hundreds of thousands secondary metabolites are produced in microalgae or cyanobacteria kingdom and for many of them structure and biological function are still unknown. Currently we have unique period of time to study, understand, realize and move our knowledge in the complexity of secondary metabolites by omics approaches like 
genomics, trans transcriptomics, epigenomics, metabolomics, and see the whole problematic from a few system biology. Due to their different and specific distribution through the taxonomic groups within the plant and algae kingdom and structural complexity, it is very, very difficult to chemically synthesize them in adequate uh, yields. Therefore, bioengineering strategies to especially manipulate secondary metabolites or secondary metabolism appear to be the most promising approach to solve this problem and currently method number one is CRISPR-Cas. However, this system has not yet been properly established in microalgae yet, and currently it is big challenge for research. A successful introduction of this method opens the door for many applications in biotechnology, which we can then call our green future. CRISPR technology could be used as the main tool for effective remodeling of metabolic pathways. We are talking about metabolic engineering. Using this technique, it is possible to directly or indirectly modify many pathways to change one or more enzymatic re reactions in order to produce new compounds as well as improve the production of known compounds. So using this technique it is possible to directly and indirectly modify many pathways to change one or more enzymatic reaction and uh, as we can see from uh, we can increase the production these compounds. Looking at our fields and crops that suffer immen immensely from both direct in and indirect human and natural impact, we found out that so-called living or non-degraded soil is diminishing and sustainability of agriculture and production of basic human needs is becoming more and more complicated. If we add the great outflow of population into the cities and lack of interest in agriculture among the growing generation, we are getting to the point of no return. Microalgae have many advantages over terrestrial plants, as I mentioned. Owing to current technologies such as nanomaterials, photovoltaic panels, LED lighting, automatization and artificial intelligence, it is possible to use microalgae biotechnology in places where growing crop is not possible and which are now being to appear all over the world. In regards particularly Westland city environment, abundant factories, and all industry zones, roofs and building facades. These are new fields for biotechnologies. Another equal important advantage of microalgae is that they retain access of atmospheric CO2 and produce O2. Does help to re reduce the, our greenhouse effect and hopefully feed whole world. Thank you very much for your attention and see you next time in real world. Bye bye.